here and uh, we're giving you a prophetic news intelligence report on the economy uh, revolution and where America is headed. You know, uh, right now, as I'm taping this to you, and uh, over the last, I guess since September 17th, there have been uh, very large demonstrations at, uh, outside of the uh, Wall Street banking institutions that have been completely censored. The video footage has been completely censored by the so-called conservative news channels and the liberal news channels and uh, all the Big Brother media. They've blacked it out like it doesn't exist. Conversely, with the Arab Spring, they're showing <clears throat> excuse me, popular uprisings. Now, today, uh, 700 people got arrested uh, as the police uh, uh, kind of boxed them in. They had them going on to, I believe it was the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, out of Manhattan onto the bridge where they arrest 700. And, and, this, and the tragedy is that on camera, which was not shown uh, to the world, uh, was what I perceived to be unprovoked police brutality. I saw uh, people club punched in the face, uh, hit with pepper spray, and, and uh, I'm not a lawyer, but it looked like illegal acts were being performed on peaceful demonstrators. And these demonstrators went outside of their way to be peaceful. Now, um, I am going to suspect, and I could, I could be wrong, that because of the level of violence and the fact that uh, organizations like Drudge and Reuters and uh, all the big British papers, uh, the Telegraph, and the Guardian, uh, and the New York Times, because they have now covered this and because it has become violent, not on behalf of the protesters, but on behalf of the police, that it's going to go global. So by the time you uh, see me talking to you, uh, this uh, suppressed uh, news story by the Orwellian Big Brother media is going to come to light. Now, I was watching, simultaneously as I was watching these demonstrations on the Internet, uh, which had just happened uh, like an hour, or maybe it was live, I don't know, uh, two hours, let's say, uh, the demonstrations and the media coverage on the Internet was uncensored, unfiltered, uh, although later on you saw uh, certain videos mysteriously taken down. Conversely, I channel surfed, I don't, I don't want to name their names, but the, the big news channels, the conservative ones, the so-called conservative ones, the liberal ones, and then of course uh, Orwell's favorite, uh, the three they're, they're no longer major networks. Let's just call them the three dinosaur networks. Now, they blacked out all this coverage and have been blacking out the coverage. Uh, what I watched was uh, diversionary discussions. Uh, anything to divert the American attention away from what was happening in Wall Street. Now, what was interesting was that these demonstrations today have spread to Chicago and L.A. and Denver and uh, all across the United States and they're anticipating uh, an increasing spread. Now, if you remember what has happened in Europe, especially in Greece and other nations, where 20,000 people would uh, turn out in a demonstration, as we had in one of the states here in the U.S. recently, um, it is conceivable that huge numbers of people could take to the streets in peaceful revolution. And uh, what I thought was interesting is that they were exposing the role of the Federal Reserve and the banking system, uh, unlike, sadly to say, many Christians who remain committed, they're more committed to cluelessness than they are to their marriages. Um, that's unkind. But really the question is not so much is, is it unkind? That's not the question that should be asked. The question sh that should be asked is, is it true?
Is what I just said true? That is the question, not whether it was unkind or not, because sometimes speaking the truth can sound unkind, and I don't mean to be unkind. I really don't. I believe in the church. I believe that the church is God's primary institution on earth, and I believe that pastors and elders uh, and other people who hold spiritual office and have been called supernaturally by God to occupy uh, the position of a pastor or a teacher or whatever, that those are men, the ones that are walking with the Lord, the ones that are faithful to preaching the Word of God, that we need to support 100%. And we need to pray for them and not criticize or attack them. And I support 100% uh, pastors in this nation or any other nation that are faithfully preaching the Word of God. They deserve our support, our prayers, and uh, whenever I go speak somewhere, and I speak at a lot of churches, and I get invitations to an awful lot of churches, uh, many I have to turn down. And uh, whenever I speak, my goal is to support that local pastor. My goal is not to draw attention to myself. My goal is to communicate a message, but when I leave there, I want to help partner with that pastor and help build up that pastor and back him up because I understand that that pastor and his wife and family are often under spiritual attack because they're on the front lines. So please don't misunderstand me. I support the local pastor and I demonstrate my support that when I speak, uh, I'm not there to, to glorify myself or to magnify, magnify myself above the pastor. I'm there to support the pastor. That's a side issue now. Now, the other thing is, though, these demonstrations are going to continue. And they're highly organized through the Internet. And they're very on target in terms of their understanding of the Federal Reserve, the banking system, who are the entities, by the way, that are deliberately collapsing the U.S. economy. Uh, they want to destroy the dollar to create a world currency and a world government. They, they've said that in their own writings. Uh, my new DVD series, which I apologize, uh, has been late in coming out. We're furiously uh, working on the final stages of editing. Uh, again, I apologize for being late on the delivery, but I'm doing everything I can to get it out. And uh, in that DVD series, Are You Ready? I go in detail about some of the stuff I just touched on. Now, here's the, the key issue, though. Um, we have to be very spiritually discerning. We can never take anything at face value. We live in an era of mass brainwashing, psychological warfare, psyops, propaganda, salesmanship, uh, whatever you want to call it. You have to ask yourself, though, whenever you see a movement, whether it's a movement you agree with or disagree with or are not sure about, you have to figure out who is behind that uh, movement and what is their agenda. So um, regarding the Wall Street po uh, protesters and the protesters um, across the United States of America, um, this is not meant as a criticism. I'm trying to be as objective as possible. Uh, but I would do this with the Tea Party or any other movement. Who's behind them? What's their real agenda? Who's financing them? And we have to be very careful about being swept up in an emotional frenzy that has been strategically planned out. And you think you're doing the right thing. Well, let me give you an example. And I'm not saying this is the case in these demonstrations. Please don't misunderstand me. But, you know, in, in Nazi Germany, the first people that followed Hitler were the idealists. They, they thought he was going to really change the nation for good. In communist Russia, the first revolutionaries were the idealists. So many times, pe people whose motives are pure, who are idealists, uh, move out. And I'm not advocating for passivity. Uh, you know, I, I advocate uh, legal, law-abiding participation in the system. But... We have to be discerning as to who is behind uh, any particular movement and what's the motive. Because you see, movements, even legitimate movements, can be derailed and used for purposes. 
the 20,000 demonstrators or more, no, excuse me, it was 200,000 demonstrators that, that turned out in Greece, they were uh, energized by the unions. Now, we're also going to see in the United States of America, in, in addition to this uh, popular uprising, and it remains to be seen if it's truly a popular uprising, we're going to see the unions uh, um, use their power to mobilize people. So in the very near future, and I wrote about this in the beginning, of, in late 2010, as the Lord put a big prophetic burden in my heart for 2011, <clears throat> but you see, our economic system is imploding. Nothing uh, that is being done has actually fixed the economy. In fact, every single thing that has been done ha has made it worse. The question is, <clears throat> is that intentional or accidental? I'll leave that to you to decide. But what can we do? Well, we need to be educated and informed, okay? Really. Um, number two is, we need to pray, not just pray, pray. We, but we participate legally in the political process, but we pray because we understand that we're fighting against principalities and uh, powers. And, and even if people's hearts are pure, <clears throat> there are principalities and powers that are very powerful that can take something that begins as noble and take it way off the tra track and make it destructive. So my encouragement uh, for you, besides being prepared, and we'll get into that later, is to pray and engage in high-level spiritual warfare fast uh, and then recognize that we're fighting a spiritual battle first and foremost. And if we're going to win uh, um, and, and save our nation, it has to be first a spiritual battle because unless we have prayer, Unless we're coming against those principalities and powers and strongholds, we won't prevail. The Bible says the horse may be ready for the day of battle, but victory comes from the Lord. I'm Paul McGuire. You can visit my website at paulmcguire.org.